regardless of any of them that are quadratics, you can always solve each of these using the quadratic formula. They can be used for anything. But now we're going to, these last three problems cannot be solved by factoring, cannot be solved using the, the, uh, the square root principle. You have to use the, um, the quadratic formula for Okay, because here, there are no two numbers that multiply to equal negative 2 and add to equal negative 7. So you're going to have to go straight to the quadratic formula, which means you're going to have to start out by identifying your a, b, and c. So a is the coefficient of x squared, b is the coefficient of x, and c is the coefficient, is the, just is the constant. Then you plug them into the formula, and you will be given the formula. So x is equal to the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b. and I have plus or minus, and then if I evaluate this, this becomes 49 minus negative 8, which is 57. This can't be simplified. Nothing can be simplified, so there is your answer. Okay, on L, let's see, I'm going to distribute. So this gives me 2x squared plus 4x is equal to x plus 3. So I'll start out by subtracting x and subtracting 3 from both sides. That gives me 2x squared plus 3x minus 3 is equal to 0. Okay, from here I want to identify my a, b, and c. So a is 2, b is 3, and c is negative 3. Now, the reason I did that is because if I multiply 2 times negative 3, I get negative 6. There are no product pair of negative 6 that add to equal 3. So now I'm going to plug these into the equation. So, And you will be given the quadratic formula. You just have to remember where the a, b, and c come from. So this is the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all divided by 2 times a. So x is negative 3, 2 times 2 is 4. And let's see, this is 9 minus eight times three is 24, negative 24, which is nine plus 24. So this becomes the square root of 33. So all of this becomes this. This cannot be simplified, so you're done. Okay, 3x squared minus 4x minus 2. Again, if I multiply these, there is no
no product of negative 6 that adds to negative 4. Sorry, I had a little brain snafu there. Okay, so A is 3, B is negative 4, and C is negative 2. So your X is equal to the opposite of B plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c, all divided by 2 times a. So the opposite of negative 4 is 4. 2 times 3 is 6. Let's see what we got going on over here. This is... 16 plus 24, so that's the square root of 40. Okay, I've got a bunch of even numbers here. It looks like if I can simplify this, I can do something with all of this. All right, so 40, and I'll continue it on up here. Well, 40 is divisible by 2, which is also divisible by 2 also divisible by 2. So the square root of 40 is equal to the square root of 2 times 2 times 2 times 5, which equals 2 root 10. So this becomes 4 x equals, excuse me, 4 plus or minus 2 times the square root of 10 divided by 6. Okay, now all of these are even numbers. You can't look at anything inside. You can only look at these. All of these are even numbers, so you can divide each of them by 2. So I'm going to take each of these and divide by 2. And this is should say divide by 2. So 4 divided by 2 is 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 6 divided by 2 is 3 times the square root of 10. So that's simplified. So you definitely want to look for that. Okay, well that was a long group. All right, um, 18, find the equation of a vertical line. So if I, you want to, just draw yourself a quick drawing. So it goes through negative 4, 5. So that's this line right here. Here's the point, negative 4, 5. Well, the equation of a vertical line is x equals a number. So the equation is x equals negative 4. Every point on this line has an x-coordinate of negative 4. And the slope of a vertical line is undefined. Okay. The horizontal line containing this point is right here. The horizontal line is y equals a number. So the equation is y equals 5 and the slope is 0. Okay, so let me find my ruler. Uh-oh, what did I do with it? I have hidden it somewhere. There we go. Okay, so y equals 3. We know that is a horizontal line. Where y equals 3. So there's my equation right here. Or excuse me, yeah, there's my line right here and the slope is zero. 
Okay, for the linear equation x equals negative 2, let's graph it. This is a vertical line. where x equals negative 2. It's on this same grid here. And the slope is undefined. Okay, for the equation 5x plus 3x, find the x and y intercepts, find the slope, and graph the line. You can do this in any order you want. The x and the y intercepts. Okay, for the x intercept, you let y equal 0 and solve for x. So 5x plus 3 times 0 equals negative 6. 5x is negative 6, so x is negative 6 over 5. So my x-intercept is negative 6 over 5, 0. For my y-intercept, let x equal 0 and solve for y. So that's 5 times 0 plus 3y is equal to 6. 3y equals 6. And I get that y is 2. So it's 0, 2. Okay, so 0, 2. Okay, well, negative 6 fifths is really hard to graph, so I want to find the slope on this. So I want to convert to slope intercept form. So if I start out with 5x plus 3y is equal to negative 6, subtract 5x. So I get 3y is equal to negative 5x minus 6. And I get that y is equal to negative 5 thirds x minus 2. Oops, this is negative 6. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Well, this, and that's how I caught this. This confirms my y-intercept is negative 2. So it's not up here. It's down here. Now, from here, it tells me, to, for my slope, from this point, go down, three into the, down 5 into the right 3. So I'm going to go down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 into the right 3. And then I can connect my dots. Now, I know it should go through my x-intercept, or my x-axis, somewhere like right around here. So let's see if in fact it does. And it does. So there you have it. Okay, find the slope of the linear equation y equals 3x. Your slope is 3. Find an equation of the line containing the point negative 1, negative 3, and a slope of m equals negative 4. Since it's given you a point and a slope, use the point-slope form. y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. 
So this is your X1, this is your Y1, and this, of course, is your M. Now, it just says an equation, so you can write it in point-slope form, or you can, depending on the instructions, if it says write it in slope-intercept form, you're going to want to take it further. So I know I've got Y minus negative 3 is equal to our slope times X minus X1. So this is Y plus 3 is equal to negative 4, times x plus 1. That's point slope form. Now in the answer key you'll see that it's, it's given to you in slope intercept form so let's go ahead and do that. So this gives me y plus 3 is equal to negative 4x minus 4. When I subtract 3 from both sides I get y equals negative 4x minus 7 and that is slope intercept form. If it just says an equation, you can do either one. Okay, 25, find the slope. All right, so I'm going to find two points. Well, there's one right here, and there's one right here. So my slope is going to be my vertical change over my horizontal change. My graph is going down, so I know this is going to be negative. So how many units am I going down? Two. And then I'm going to the right, four. So when I simplify this, it's negative one-half. Okay, if I have this line here, this is a vertical line. My slope is undefined. Okay, find the slope of the line passing through here. So the slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So let's call this x1, y1, x2, y2. So my slope is going to be y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1, negative 9 over negative 6, which is actually 3 over 2. Okay, now it says find an equation of the line. So that means I need a slope and a point. I'm going to use this information to write the equation of the line. So this is y minus y1 is equal to my slope times x minus x1. Now again, it says an equation, that's fine. If they ask you to put it in slope-intercept form, then you have y minus 2 equals 3 halves x minus 6. If I add 2 to both sides, this gives me y equals 3 halves x minus 4. So just read the instructions and, and figure out what's going on. Okie dokie. We'll stop here, start a new video.